would a mobs leader be suited for a CMO role? Why or why not? I, I think the first thing we need to understand is the reality of marketing leadership today, where a marketing team has this huge array of skill sets that are all kind of jam packed into this one function, everything from like totally creative brand related <laughs> skills to hard technical operational skills. So there are approximately zero people in the world that are masters of all these skills. You're never going to find um, that right. person. You know, it's more like that spider chart where someone, you know, some people skew over here and they have these skills, mm -hmm. some people skew over there. Um, and that's, and that's okay. So I think a, a great CMO doesn't need to be an expert in every area. There are some things they can outsource to other members of their team, but I do think there are a certain set of core competencies that the leader needs to have innately. But when I think about what the non-negotiables of a marketing leader are, um, I think that customer insight, customer empathy, customer curiosity, it's going to be very difficult to be a good marketing leader if you don't have that. You can manage a team or manage a department, but if you don't okay. have that innately, you're not going to be able to make good decisions. You're not going to be able to evaluate. Even if you're not the most creative person, you still need to have that core of just curiosity about your customer to weigh in mm -hmm. on the ideas that other people are bringing to you. So I think that is is something. I think business acumen is another thing. Mm -hmm. um, if like you can be super creative, but I think if you are creative but untethered from business realities and you don't have W at least within yourself, the ability to understand marketing's role within a business, to make business level decisions, to speak to business level execs, you're better off as like a creative director in an agency, mm -hmm. you know, where you can just exercise that creative muscle and you don't have to worry about that. So I think to lead the function, you need the business acumen. Some basic understanding of positioning and messaging. It doesn't mean again, that you need to be the one to develop that, that you need to write mm -hmm. copy. But I think you really, you do need to like feel where does your product sit relative to that customer? Where does it sit within the market relative to other competitors? And to have those discussions and weigh in on those things. And then I think the ability to understand operations is important. This doesn't mean that you need to run your tech stack. This doesn't mean that you have to be the most operational person in the world. But if, again, if you're going to lead a function, how, how do the, you know, how is that team structured? How do people work together? Um, how should you operationalize your funnel? all that how do, how do things get done how do campaigns get out the door all that sort of stuff if i take that profile which you know right. people may or may not agree with but i take that profile and then i stack ops against it it's not impossible for me i think a strategic operator um can get there especially if they've started out in a marketing like like one of the other fields of marketing and moved into yeah. ops then maybe can graduate from there into like demand gen and then being a marketing leader and i've seen people make that journey so it happens but I think that many people who are in the field today are very tech heavy are very process heavy and um, and are happy in that space and lack the skills that would be needed to be a great CMO it doesn't mean that those skills mm -hmm. couldn't be cultivated but to take someone who is just like really into running Marketo and optimizing the tech stack mm -hmm. and efficiency and automation, like those things are important. I think yes. there are, there are um, certainly operators out there who could do this, but they have they have to, I think, have those some of those innate skills, want to develop them, and have gone through that training. Maybe doing a tour of duty and you know running some other areas of marketing <laughs> or business. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yep. And and in, in order in order to get there. In the land of end to end digital experiences for customers. Yeah. Whom else would be the best candidate to be a CMO today? Than wow, someone that you're coming not out only hot. Wow. not only orchestrates technology platforms, but how do you then enable actual campaign production across those technology platforms. How do you respect privacy data compliance and all of the elements related to that digital experience? How do you ensure the seamless transition of brand experience with digital experience with everything else? How do you interact upstream in the sales organization with funnel? Um, 
how do you manage finance and budgeting and planning and attribution and understanding the contribution? Yeah, I don't I don't think it's marketing operations. I think it's 100% marketing operations. Yeah, the path exactly. to CMO today, in my opinion, is rooted in an understanding and appreciation of marketing operations. So yes, mm -hmm. the path to leadership in marketing and I would hazard a guess in go-to-market operations overall, begins in that operations layer. That's where leadership comes from. I think that marketing operations leaders are the Swiss army knife that yeah. does all of that enablement. And the, to me, the notion of a good CMO is someone who can produce that melting pot effect of all of the elements that come together to make a really great combination of operations and content and data and technology. And it lands right within marketing operations today. What I love about marketing ops people is they will always question things and double click and be like, wait, why, why would you do it that way? Or that's that's right. not what the numbers say. Like I love that. Like really question what's happening and if it makes sense to continue hammering home that that program or whatever. And I think it is mm -hmm. that that notion of motion and leadership is motion. That mm -hmm. you know, if you have the human characteristics that mm -hmm. attract that right mix and blend of change in a forward direction, that's leadership. If they can transform, yes. They need to pick up more skills along the way, I think. If if you're going to become if you're going to become the CMO, the CMOs I know, they I guess the pros of a MOPS person is that you have the data. You understand the data. Mm -hmm. And as a CMO, you need to understand the data to be able to tell the story. And that's that's the pro, it's the advantage. But the disadvantage for a marketing operations person, we've kind of we've talked about this before, is that you know you you're you're so technical that if you haven't developed the soft skills of communication, and if you mm -hmm. haven't like if you're if you're not comfortable living outside of that individual contributor role with uh, being behind the technology like you're just you're not going to do a very good job you're you're, you're not going to love it because the responsibilities of a cmo are are just they're they're a lot more encompassing like they've mm -hmm. got to transform a mm -hmm. person has to transform from that marketing ops person to to get out of the bubble and see the wider picture. They don't need to be an expert in everything else, but like at least be able to understand the business as a whole and yeah. um, be able to understand how to communicate and influence in the politics, which, um, you know, in the in the mop circles is what we all love to to poke fun at them and say we you know, we hate them. But if you can learn to actually work within them, yeah, I think that's definitely a key a key requirement to actually transit transforming into be to being ready for a cmo position a lot of the marketing ops people that i encounter i'm not entirely sure they would even be happy as a cmo i think somebody who's that data obsessed and driven is giving a new um perspective to that cmo uh seat that you just know data understand data in such a deep way that I think would um, bring a different opinion and a view on things. The only problem is, as you said, a lot of marketing ops people either are too in the weeds or they're missing the soft skills of developing those relationships, influencing people, communicating, and understanding the bigger picture of things. So would a mops leader, be suited for a CMO role. Why or why not? But you look at like um, a lot of CMOs or most maybe even. Um, it's not like they've done every single function on the marketing team. Sure. Maybe they have. Maybe they, maybe some mm -hmm. of them definitely have. Um, 
but most of them come from like a certain background, whether it's like brand or product marketing or demand. Like there's so many different, I think, you know, journeys that someone can have on their way to their path to becoming a leader. What like MOPS leaders have at their core, they usually have deep analytical skills. Um, they have the ability to assess people's needs um, and create processes and, you know, remove blockers and, you know, ultimately help make people's jobs easier by the processes um, and functions that they put in place. Um, they're well connected to revenue, they usually like a MOPS leader that is um, not just looking at marketing driven revenue, but they're looking at revenue for the entire business and like kind of, you know, the comparison between the two. Um, the one element that I think is maybe missing that, so it's like, yes, and, um, mm -hmm think maybe MOPS leaders maybe need some sort of time in product marketing on their way to mm -hmm. um, becoming a CMO. Um, I, and I think maybe making sure you have a really close, um, you know, relationship, working relationship with finance to make sure you mm -hmm. really understand everything that, go, like everything that needs to be tracked, like, mm -hmm. um, and understanding all of those numbers, like, um, end to end. Um, but I do think when I try to I'm like, you know, I don't, as a, as a MOPS professional, like, I don't know a lot about um, brand and PR. And so it's like, that's an, that's an element that's missing. I haven't spent a lot of time in product yeah. marketing. It's not, like, but I, everyone's journey is so different. So it's like, yeah. who knows what your background was before you even got into MOPS, um, you know, but it is just like making sure at the core, like you have deep um, analytical skills and you understand the business and you understand which levers to pull to make a difference in the business. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think being able to do that could make you an excellent CMO, no matter what your background was, like what part of the team you started from. But the question is, are our MOPS leaders willing to reroute a little bit if they want to get on that path to become a CMO? Are they willing yeah. to spend a little time on the PR side, on the product side? Like, are they willing to get more experience? It's not saying, like I said earlier, you don't need, you might not need everything, but you do need yeah. some of the core components. And usually in MOPS, I think what we're used to, what we either sit on a demand team or we sit on a RevOps team. Um, mm -hmm. And that's usually kind of where our minds are, is kind of exactly. top funnel and down, um, you know, through sales, post-sale, all that kind of stuff. But there's still the, the very, very top of the funnel is still very important to understand too. Yes. Like I have seen people who are in marketing leader, CMO type of roles who have advanced and have marketing ops backgrounds. And they tend to be very good, like CMO, very good marketing leaders because they're very, they're very keen on measuring results, measuring the results that matter, um, looking at the full funnel of marketing. And actually, I really want to see more MOPS leaders advance to that CMO role because I think it will make the job of the CMO a lot more strategic. Not that it isn't already, mm -hmm. but having that focus on being like being very data centric, being very measurement driven, looking at the looking at the return of investment and looking at the portfolio of of marketing is very is very important. Mm -hmm. And I think having more CMOs that just have that as part of their DNA is very important. Would a MOPS leader be positioned to be a CMO? So it comes from how is MOPS positioned in your company? It can be considered kind of a strategic element of marketing. It could be a tactical element of marketing, which means that you've got a little bit of work to do. There, there may be a cultural element there that may like present like a ceiling for people in MOPS just based upon like how culturally the organization thinks about marketing. Some of these roles, like especially the brand leader and the demand gen leader, people just instinctively say yes, because a lot of CMOs are promoted yeah. up from those roles. They're considered more strategic, um, depending upon the culture of the organization. If the culture is more brand centric, you see people come up from brand to the CMO role. We have the skill set to really think strategically at that C level role. 
But we also need to think that the CMO role is a marketing generalist role. Try saying that 10 times fast. The CMO role is a marketing generalist role. So in order to move up from like being in our marketing operations, like people process, campaign operations, technology focused roles, we have to be able to see the needs and we need to be able to be versed in the needs of all of the other areas of marketing in an organization, which is sometimes hard for us to get out of that mindset. And in some ways we have to, we're, if we want to make that career move, we're going to have to make a sacrifice perhaps in not giving as much attention to mops as, as we have, or ma making lateral career moves into area, other areas of marketing to gain exposure, whether that's demand gen, mm -hmm. brand events, if you're going to commit to climbing up to that level of the ladder. Like number one, you do need to understand more about the organization than what's in our you know, narrow career path, which means you're gonna have to take steps to move laterally into other areas of the organization, be more of a generalist, mm -hmm. which means we have to give up some of our specialist desires. Mm -hmm. Additionally, in order to manage more and more and more responsibility, it's just gonna require more and more time. Like you, you have to understand how all of these you know, functions operate. You have to be able to take in a lot of information and be able to make decisions very quickly. And that, um, which means either A, you have to be able to delegate really well and you have budget to, you know, hire a number of people that can own all of those bits and pieces, mm -hmm. but in a do more with less type of environment like we have today, it most likely means that you're gonna have to take on a lot, a lot more yourself. I think mm -hmm. there is a lot of work for a MOPS professional to do to succeed in a CMO role. So a MOPS professional traditionally is sort of a background position, right? And okay. a CMO role is very much in the forefront. <laughs> um, so that's kind of the number one thing. I think the other thing mm -hmm. that MOPS people will struggle with in a CMO role is creative and strategy. Um, so okay. a lot of roles traditionally very analytic, very data focused position. Um, CMO role is very much about communication and audience connection and overall strategy that is high level as far as not only sort of marketing, but also the rest of the business. Um, so previously we talked about, I think one of the, I don't know what the topic was, but I was like, one of the things that most professionals struggle with is like, what does the business do? <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Those sorts of things, right? Um, a CMO has to be very, very in tune to that. And in my um, professional life, they're very much connected to the customer. And the MOPS professional is very much distant from the customer. Yes, right? Um, that's right. So that's the, that's the gap that needs to be closed in order for a MOPS professional to be very, very good at transitioning over to a CMO. There needs to be more human connection. It's difficult for a MOPS professional to get out of their task oriented day to day and really think strategically as to why these decisions mm -hmm. need to be made. What is the why behind all of it? And being able to communicate those sorts of things up to executives is very, very important. Successful CMOs that I've seen navigate it are, are just really excellent communicators. You have to understand what people are saying and what people are not saying, right? Like they'll say the words, but they really mean something else, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. And the better that you are at navigating that and not just taking people at the words that come out of their mouth, the better off you'll be, because that's what we get tripped up on for the most part. Like a, an executive will say, I want this thing, or I want this dashboard, and you'll give it to them, and they'll be like, I don't like this. And you'd be like, but this is what you said that you wanted. <laughs> it's like, ooh, but they're, what they're really saying is, I just, I just need to understand what you're doing. 
give me anything that shows me what you're doing. That's not necessarily this. This is the reference that I have for it is a dashboard. Mm -hmm. But if you give me some justification for what's going on here and how you're being successful, that's what they need. So they can then translate that to somebody else, right? So it's like, you have to kind of go a layer down, get deep with that person and understand what they're saying, not necessarily the words coming out of their mouth. It's hard. Ultimately, can a MOPS professional move into a CMO role? Sure. They will have to overcome a lot, in my opinion, to get there because there are many, many layers to that role that MOPS professionals don't see um, mm -hmm. because they are so buried in tasks. So I understand that mm -hmm. part as well, but you're going to have to pop your head out of the water and really understand from a uh, broad perspective all of the the things that a CMO deals with on a day-to-day -day basis. It's a lot. It's going to require MOPS professionals to step away from the numbers, and that's where we're comfortable at. It's like our safety blanket. Mm -hmm. And I think that a CMO relies on us for that. That's not their job. That's not their core, their core kind of like purview. It's a part of it right? Because yep. you have to kind of justify what you're doing, but they rely on us for that. That's not them is what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. So it's like, yes, that's a great skill to have. And, you know, you know, EBITDA and all the good financial yeah. stuff. Sure. But yeah. I think the crux of that, the, the crux of the job for us to be successful is a, it's a communication function. So mm -hmm. the better that you are at that, that's, that's where I've seen the good samples shine. They're, they're phenomenal communicators. Thank you.